1.6 is continuity. What is a continuous function? Well, we talked about this a little bit earlier, but we'll go into it a little more now with some different kinds of examples. So a continuous function can be drawn without lifting your pencil. That's pretty easy to figure out, right? If you have to lift, or you have to go around in circles, then it's not continuous. Types of continuity, we can have a hole. That's a point or removable discontinuity. So if we have something like y equals x squared minus 4 over x plus 2, you would know that you could factor this to be x plus 2 times x minus 2 and divide by x plus 2. And you would know from your extensive mathematical knowledge that you would be graphing the line y equals x minus 2. So x minus 2, positive slope of 1, goes through negative 2, goes like this. But when x is equal to negative 2, the height of the function would be negative 4. Right? When I plug in negative 2 here, so this would be um, y equals x minus 2. So minus 2 minus 2 is minus 4. And that would be a hole here. So there would be a point discontinuity here. A jump discontinuity simply means that uh, it's usually you find in piecewise functions. So you have something that goes like this and then it ends and then maybe continues with a solid function up here, solid point. So this would be a jump because you're jumping up there. An infinite discontinuity occurs when you have asymptotes. So for instance, if I had a function that had, well, I use this one here, 1 over x minus 2. So this would be x equals 2. It's even. Remember, we talked about even functions in advanced functions. So they go in the same direction. Or we could have something where we have an asymptote where it's going up on one side and down on the other. So th these would both be infinite discontinuities. So either even or odd functions because we can't tell you what um, well, they don't join here at all, right? They're going in different directions. Okay, so looking at this handout here that I've made for you, well, you're not going to get it, but it, it was a handout of mine. We have a function here, f of x, and three different variations on it. And what we're going to do is talk about whether it is continuous or discontinuous at certain points. So we're going to do that by looking at the limit as x approaches 2. So you want to go to places where there is um, a, a change in direction. Or in this case, this was probably a piecewise function that had some parabola shifted down and then it went to 2 and then it was continued by a, a line function. So you want to know what's happening right at the point where the two parts of your piecewise function get together. I'll do a really long example of this at the end of the lesson. So the limit as x approaches 2 from the left, that means going this way, and I would get 3. And as I approach from the right, that's coming this way, from the right going left, it also is at 3. The limit as x approaches 2 then will be 3. It's 3 because the limit from the left equals the limit from the right, and the limit at 2 would be 3. What is f at 2? Well, it's obvious that there is a point here. The function is continuous. It doesn't stop. There's no holes. So f at 2 equals 3, and that means it is continuous at 2. The question probably asked you, is this continuous at the point x equals 2? That would probably be more what it would say. Okay, look, look at this one here. The limit as x approaches 2 from the left. Well, that goes to 3. The limit as x approaches 2 of f at x from the right, that would be 4. The limit as x approaches 2 does not exist because the limit from the left is not equal to the limit from the right. And f at 2, f at 2, it does have a point, it is 3. So it's discontinuous at 2. It is continuous because in order for it to be continuous, these would have to join together. And the last one, 2 from the left, we would get 3. 2 from the right, we would get 4. The limit as x approaches 2 does not exist. f at 2 happens to be this little dot up here. So f at 2 is equal to 5. And this is also discontinuous at 
x equals 2, or 2. Okay, now the last one I want to do is um, a question you probably get on a unit test or something. The teacher will ask you to determine where a function is discontinuous. So in this case, we have a piecewise function that has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 parts, and probably be a good idea for you to draw it. Now, there is a way to do it without drawing it, but we're going to draw it and also do the other way as well so that you can see how, how you would go about this work. Okay, so it says f at x equals 0. Maybe we'll get some colored pencils here. f at x equals 0 if x is less than or equal to negative 1. So that means from here, x is less than or equal to negative 1. That's my first part of my function f at x equals x plus 1 between negative 1 and 0. So I want to really check how I go from here to here, 0 to the 0, how I'm joining these two these functions as we move along. So in the first one, we're going from minus 1 to 0. So if I put in minus 1, x plus 1, x plus minus, or minus 1 plus 1 would be 0 but it's greater than, so this would be an open circle here, but because it's already closed in for the first part of the function, then it's still continuous here. When x equals 0, so less than or equal to, we're using the line x plus 1, and when x is 0, I'm at 1. So that's going to include this point, and it will be a line like that. Okay, so for, so far everything is continuous. Like this is continuous here because it joined together. Um, the next part says x squared between 0 and 1. So I want to know what is the height of the function, this function, x squared, when x is 0. So when x is 0, it would be 0, but we're talking about greater than or equal to. So at that point, that means I'm going to have an open circle at 0 like this. And when x is 1, it would be 1, but it's an open circle at 1 because it's not equal to it. And it's a parabola, so it's going like this. The function is equal to 1 if x is equal to 1. So if it's equal to 1, so that gives me the point 1, 1. That's this point right here. So I'm going to fill this one in. So there's my 1, 1. And it's equal to 1 over 2 minus x if x is greater than 1. So first of all, I need to know where is my asymptote. My vertical, vertical asymptote is going to happen when x is 2. So I'm going to put a dotted line here. So this is definitely a point of discontinuity. And it's um, if we wanted to draw this, it would probably be a good idea for you to maybe um, think about it in terms of 1 over x. So if I have 1 over 2 minus x, that's the same thing as 1 over minus x plus 2, which is the same thing as 1 over negative x minus 2. In other words, I have an asymptote at 2. It's reflected. So this is a change in x. So it's reflected about the y-axis. So in other, in other words, my function is going to be going this way on this side. So maybe, hmm, do I have another color? I'll do it in pink. So it's going this way on this side of the function. So this is definitely discontinuity, but I need to know what happens when x is 1 for this function. So if I put in 1 here, I have 1 over 1, which is 1. So that means it's continuing here. It would be going like this. So there's my all my function drawn in. Okay, so where is a function continuous? Where is it discontinuous? So I need to check again at the points where it joins. So at x equals negative 1. So I'm going to check what is the limit as x approaches negative 1. Let me just add a little bit of light here. Down. Okay, as x approaches negative 1, and I want to check it from the left of f at x. So negative 1 from the left is 0. The limit as... Now, it depends on what your teacher wants. He might want you to write all of this out. So if I approach negative 1 from the right, 
of f at x, negative 1 from the right, that's also 0. So that means that the limit as x approaches negative 1 of f at x is 0. And this all determines that we are continuous. Continuous at x equals minus 1. So I've proven it by showing you the limit from the left and the right and that the limit exists and it is 0. So at x equals 0, I would say, okay, now again, we're on to this one here now, right? Where they join, 0 to 0. So the limit as x approaches 0 from the left of f at x equals, so 0 from the left is 1. The limit as x approaches 0 from the right, I'm sure you've already figured that out, 0 from the right is 0, and f at 0 is equal to 1. So this is definitely discontinuous because the limit from the left is not equal to the limit from the right. f at 0 equals 1, but that doesn't matter to us because we have this, and you can see it right here, it is a jump discontinuity. So the limit as x approaches 0 of f at x does not exist. Now we need to check what happens at 1. So the limit as x approaches 1 from the right of f at x. So what's happening from the right of f at x? We get 1. The limit as x approaches 1 from the left of f at x. 1 from the left is also 1. f at 1 is also 1. So this says that this is continuous. The limit as x approaches 1 of f at x is 1. This is an equal sign here. So they're all 1. f at 1 is 1. The limit from the left equals the limit from the right. So the limit as x approaches 1 exists. It is 1. Everything is 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. So this means it's continuous. And I mean, that's obvious, right? It's obvious from your drawing. Now, if you hadn't drawn the function or graphed the function, I should say, you would still want to check all these points where the function joins. So minus 1, 0, and 1. And you have to also watch out for vertical asymptotes. And, okay, so a little concluding statement. The function is discontinuous function is discontinuous and make sure while I'm writing this out that you think about subscribing please only about 33 percent of my viewers subscribe and that makes me very sad so at x equals zero the function is discontinuous and that was a jump discontinuity your teacher might ask what kind of discontinuity it is and at x equals two that would be what we called an infinite discontinuity. Infinite discontinuity. Okay, so that's a pretty easy lesson on continuous and uh, continuous functions and discontinuity.